Hello friends and welcome back to the dork side. I'm the dork in the road and today I'm going to share all the mods that I've added to my 2022 Yamaha Tenere 700. I'm the dork in the road and I want to be your internet riding buddy, so please consider subscribing. This is my awesome Tenere 700. I know some of you are getting your hands on them or eagerly anticipating getting your hands on one. And so I just kind of wanted to run down the mods I've used and kind of give you quick thoughts on everything that's on there so that you can get some ideas if you're building a Tenere of your own, if you have a Tenere of your own, or you're thinking of getting a Tenere of your own. I've been fortunate to work with some cool sponsors on this build. Big shout outs to Turretech and Rocky Mountain ATV, Giant Loop Seat Concepts, A to Z Composites, Vanash Motorsports, and maybe a couple others I've forgotten we'll get them along the way. There's a lot of mods, so let's just jump right in. We'll start at the top and work our way down. One of the first things you notice on the Tenere 700, if you get it, is that the buffeting is kind of bad with the tiny little windscreen. So I got this Turretech adjustable windscreen. Check this out. One hand adjustability up and down. So highway mode, trail mode. It's super easy to adjust while on the bike with one hand i can do it while i'm riding and i can tell you that makes a night and day difference in the buffeting and where the wind hits you it's just enough to get it up over the helmet you still get a little from the sides but not crazy like it was stock so that is a really worthwhile awesome addition and i recommend it wholeheartedly and while we're up here also from turretech this is the headlight guard which admittedly is maybe not the most essential accessory it's a little bit of peace of mind it's nice to know that if you're riding behind somebody who's throwing up big rocks like explore adventure moto you'll be protected from those rocks cracking or breaking your headlight and the nice thing about this one is it comes off i can just pop this off and watch the headlight and the protector so it's that easy and it goes back on just as easy i'm doing all this while filming one-handed so can't be that hard right Kind of a neat setup you guys know i love my double take mirrors adjustable they move if you drop the bike or hit something going through the woods you can fold them in if you're in a tight space or just like loading it in my trailer it is so nice to have these so i can fold it in so can't say enough about double take mirrors i love them i put them on every bike you guys know that by now this is the quad lock weatherproof charger so it's, it's waterproof up on top and it's quick and easy to put your phone in and out of this so you plop, pop it on like that it's an induction charger comes off just as easy just like that. I'm on and off the bike a lot, taking pictures, so that's important to me to be able to get it on and off quickly. And knowing that it's charging, particularly when it's my GPS or my backup GPS, super useful to me. You're gonna want this piece. This is the vibration dampener because uh, this vibration for motorcycles can really mess with your cameras on your phones, destroy the optical stabilization. So you want this vibration dampener. I have had no problems running these and it's, I've been running them for years. And this is just the quad lock bar mount. Next to that, you can see my Garmin Zumo XT. People always ask me if I recommend it and it's been fine but it's kind of finicky and a pain in the ass to use so i think it's the best thing out there for what we do but it, it isn't something that i love and wholeheartedly recommend it's fine it does great once you get the tracks on there and kind of get the hang of it it's awesome lots of cool features i've used it a ton but uh it is a little fiddly so it's not the best easiest setup it's actually mounted on this is the moto pumps gps mount so that goes directly to the bar and it just uses your existing mount pieces. And I wired this in, it's hardwired down into the accessory connector underneath the side panel here. So my GPS is always on, always charging. But the other thing I've added recently that you guys haven't seen is this locking mount. I have a promo code, which I'll put on the screen for you. That'll save you a little bit more money, but it works really well and uh, it's a lot less expensive. Let me show you how it works. So it's a three piece system. There's this plate that you can't hardly see, but it has these hoops on it. There's a locking pin and there's a key all you do is put your gps on like normal and you can see that there's this release lever right here right and that's what makes it so you take the gps off so uh, you just press that down and it comes right off simple so instead of physically locking it to the bike this setup just makes it so you can't release it from the mount so you just take this pin and you slide it in there we've got the key it's just got like a three-prong design and you just tighten it down Bam, okay, it's tightened down. You need this key to get it out of there. And look, the button will not depress. It physically stops the button from pressing. Cannot release the GPS. That works with almost any GPS mount because it's pretty standardized to this APMS pattern. AP, it's four letters, one of them is A. Tusk Deflex Pro hand guards. These are sturdy, sturdy, sturdy. I was beyond excited to put them on this bike because I knew they were gonna do the job because I've used them on several other bikes and they're not expensive. I like the pros the best. They have a really stiff aluminum bar and then you can, these shields are replaceable. So if you scuff them up or destroy them, you just buy another one cheap. I did have to do a couple weird things with this. That's actually a nylon spacer that I found. It's actually from a kit for mounting TVs, but I just needed a little space 
between the bar ends and the grip. So I've got one on each end. So just know that going in, these are threaded bars, but what you get with the deflexes are not the right size to use the threaded bars. So I actually use the expander bolts inside there and the threads hold them in super tight. These are the Koso Apollo. I think they're Apollo grips. And the reason why I went with these, first of all, shout out to Big Rock Moto because I saw them in his video and knew they were the ones I wanted, but there is no separate controller. This is the switch right here to turn them on and off and adjust them up and down. So it's integrated into the grip, no extra bulk on your bars. I really like that slick. They cost slightly more than the Oxfords, but I thought it was worth it for this. Old Faithful, the Giant Loop Diablo tank bag. I originally had the Fandango on this. That's the eight liter tank bag. And it was a little taller than I wanted for moving around on the bike. So I went back to the Diablo. This is the six liter bag. Zips off here, as you can see. So easy fuel fills, you just flip the, the bag over. This harness never comes off for any reason. You can take the bag all the way off, take it inside with you. It's got an elastic pouch, I keep my earplugs in there. And then inside a mesh pouch, and then it's got a clear mat pocket on top. Lots of space inside, waterproof, comes with the divider. Super cool piece of kit. Oh, while we're up here, one of the nice things about the Tenere is it comes stock with this charger port. So I just got this three port Amazon special USB charger, but it's also a voltmeter. It is nice to be able to see the voltage when I'm riding. Okay, moving back along the top, maybe my favorite mod and, and the most essential mod, in my opinion, for this bike is this seat concept seat. I'm gonna link everything in the description, but this is the one piece comfort. They make a two piece, but the one piece is so nice because you can slide back and forth and it is so much better than the stock seat. I hated the stock seat. I had to ride this 45 minutes home from the dealership and I was hating it by the time I got home. I'm told they break in. I had some success with that with that pad that I used that I put in that video about seat hacks for the Tenere, but uh, the seat concept seat, man, invaluable. Cannot beat it as a mod and highly, highly, highly recommended for your seating posterior needs. Back up at the front, a couple more things to show you. Tusk upper crash bars. Those went on really easily, they're not expensive, and they work super well, and they're gonna protect that fairing. And bonus, you can get the fairing on and off with them on there. I've done it, I don't even wanna say how many times, 10 times, because I've been mounting accessories and wiring things in, and then one time I forgot to hook the turn signal up, so I had to take it back off and put it back on. These Tusk crash bars, they mount securely, so there's one mounting point here. They mount to the actual frame, not the engine to each other underneath you can see and those are sturdy cheap work well and the bonus 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 you can get those side fairings off also up front these are the a to z composites fork guards those are carbon fiber super light they just slide right on there you gotta love the logo i got a discount code for those too which i will throw in for you if i didn't mention it but giant loop if you decide you want a tank bag or uh panniers i'm going to show you 15 percent off with promo code dork in the road up underneath this is the turretech radiator guard that thing uh is much better than the stock plastic no worries at all about rocks getting up and messing up my radiator or even mud filling it i think it's a really cool design that way up front we have tusk d sport tires i have these tires on i think five bikes they wear like iron have great traction they will fill up with mud a little but every kind of dual sport tire does that's about the only complaint i have about them i've been super impressed with them and they're a little stiff and hard to put on uh, that's also a complaint, but I have thousands of miles on these tires on my DRZ, my Norden, my Tenere. They're on my 450L right now, and I very much recommend them. Great front tire and the rear if you can get it to fit. I don't have it on this bike because they don't make one wide enough. Moving back, this is the Turatec Expedition skid plate. If you look at Beefy in the dictionary, there's going to be a picture of a cow. And then right underneath that, the second definition is going to be a picture of this skid plate. It is thick. It's an interesting design. There are some things I like about it and some things I don't. The Tenere has an oil filter right on the front of the engine. So this has a separate brace. You can kind of see it right here that protects that oil filter and the skid plate mounts to that. And it's also got these sort of springy clips that give it a little bit of give when you hit things. And it has plastic sliders underneath, but it is fiddly and a pain in the ass to take on and off. It has to come mostly all the way off to do an oil change. You have to flip the bracket up to get the oil filter off, but the, the bottom bracket doesn't have to come off, but the whole skid plate does. So it's a lot of screwing and unscrewing. So if you're into that, well, to each their own, but it is a little bit fiddly. Uh, this is the Turatec rear brake pedal extender. The rear brake pedal on this thing's pretty small, so I bought this thing and I cut the crap out of my hands on it, putting the other foot pegs on. So it's sharp and grips well. So that's a worthwhile addition, makes that brake. The brake is a little vague and difficult to find anyway, so that helps a ton with finding it and getting your foot solidly on it. These foot pegs are a little bit of a top secret thing that I'm not sure 
sure if I'm supposed to be sharing with you, but these are Vanash Motorsports foot pegs. These are the prototypes he's working on. He borrowed the Tenere for a while to make some parts for it. And the first thing he did was create these foot pegs. They are awesome platform foot pegs. Same ones I have on the Norden. Super confidence inspiring, lots of room. They grip your feet incredibly well. They're, they're very sturdy. I dig them. I don't think he has this in his shop yet, but I'm gonna link it for you. And you go over there and annoy him and tell him he needs to get these into production so you can buy them. Also, speaking of skid plates, forgot to mention this. I've been working with Seth over at Molecule Motorsports, who apparently is in Albany, my old hometown. I did not know that he was based in the Mid Valley, but he's working on a plastic skid plate for the Tenere, and he's been borrowing mine to prototype it. So I'll link his website too, but uh, I may have one of those on here. Definitely gonna give it a shot once he gets it done. So keep an eye out for that. Luggage wise, there's three bags I like to run on this. This is my well-worn, as you can see, I use these a ton. They get real dusty. Giant loop around the world pan ears, almost 50 liters a side, a pouch front and rear. And then I sometimes we'll throw the Tillamook bag up on the top along with it, but that is purely luxury because there's plenty of room in these round the world panniers. And they are mounted with these giant loop pannier mounts, quick release, quick on and off, but they also lock. So I'm not undoing a bunch of straps and stuff. It's easy enough to just pop this handle up and take the bag in the tent or in the hotel or wherever. So this is the perfect setup and they're hard mounted to them. So that's not coming off. It's not going anywhere. And then all of that is on my Hepco and Becker pannier racks for the tenor right here. And I just add a little tape to it. Mostly like this is just to, so I know exactly where to put the edge of the clip on the quick release mounts. And then this is just to save the paint a little bit and also gives me a target to aim for. Uh, the one thing I like about these Hepco and Becker racks is they protect the exhaust. You see this, this exhaust is a notorious failure point on the Tenere. If you drop it on the side, that exhaust is not protected, but at least here it's partially protected because it's behind the pannier rack, which I like. On the back, you may notice the tail is quite tidy and that's because we have the Tusk tail tidy. It comes with these turn signals and everything you need to get rid of the big bulky whale tail and go to a much more svelte, lighter, more sleek looking rear for the bike. I think I'm gonna add a giant loop rear rack right here. It's gonna fit perfectly. The giant loop rear rack is very small and mounts directly to the fender. And that'll give me just another anchor point for an armadillo bag or a cactus canteen or even a rogue bag or a tail bag of some kind. And then moving down, ooh, Moto Z Tractionators. I have heavy duty tubes front and rear on this bike. These Tractionators are the loudest damn tires I've ever used, but the traction is fabulous. Just know they're really loud. They scream at about 75. This is the Turatec rear ABS sensor protector. You know, that's the kind of thing that can really screw up your day. All it takes is a branch kind of grabbing this or bumping this to mess that up. So, you know, it's a nice little peace of mind thing. So I'm glad that's on there. And one more thing to mention, another mod I have but I haven't put on yet is a high fender. So I have the Tusk High Fender kit. I haven't put it on yet. It's a sweet kit. Comes with the fender, comes with the brake line to reroute the brake lines. Kind of a cool setup. I just haven't put it on yet because depending on who you ask, it's either the best thing ever or terrible on the highway. So what's your opinion? I need your opinion, uh, ADV community. High fender kit, worth it to keep mud and rocks and stuff from getting caught underneath the low front fender or not worth it because it adds a bunch of instability at highway speeds? Let me know in the comments. But that is the build on the Tenere. I don't have a lot more I'm planning to do other than, like I said, maybe that high fender and I might throw that giant loop tail rack on there just for another mounting point. But I'm really happy with the setup right now, really happy with the bike. So uh, let me know, what do you think? What does it need? Uh, what does it not need? What have I got on there that I don't need? And you know, uh, what kind of mods have you got on your Tenere? Let's talk about it in the comments. So if you enjoyed the video, if you got something out of it, if you got an idea, please consider subscribing. Don't forget I'm your internet riding buddy. So I'm better than your regular riding buddies because I'm available whenever you want. And I come with a mute button. Thank you for watching. And as always, please do not forget to be excellent to each other. I thank you. Excellent!